Good evening, good evening. This is Marie Holiday. I hope everybody had a fabulous day today. And before we get started, please hit my subscribe button and hit my notification button. Support and subscribe to this channel. And I really do want to thank everyone for blocking out time out of your busy world to view my videos, to send me your comments. So with that being said, let's get down to today's exciting lecture. The focus of this lecture and I've been wanting to do a lecture on this for a minute now. Uh, but the focus of this lecture is going to be Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP fraud. Don't do it. And what motivated me to do this is I was talking to one of my subscribers uh, who subscribed to my channel and who was just pretty much telling me about the madness that's going on out there with the PPP fraud. So don't do it. So with that being said, here we go. First of all, Congress passed the CARES Act of March on March the 29th, 2020, which created a $349 billion program of forgivable loans called the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP. To apply for the forgivable loan, an applicant simply had to submit an application to their bank, along with evidence of payroll for the last year, which generally included tax returns, payroll returns, and corporate and or other business documents. So, if a person, or if you, you may have somebody listening to this who may have committed this fraud, if you lied on a PPP loan application or submitted false or forged documents or misrepresented your income in order to get this money, you know, and like I said, I'm just listening to people in a natural environment talking about how they personally know people who committed this fraud. And actually, in speaking to some of these individuals in the natural environment who's telling me about people they know of, you know, the phenomenon that's going on right now that there are individuals who market their illegal service of filing a fraudulent PPP application for a $200 to $300 application fee which that is also illegal. In addition, the person who receives the PPP money has to pay the person who filed the fraudulent application a cut of the money. Basically, in everyday language, it is a fraudulent business collaboration. Anyone who makes a decision to participate in this type of fraudulent behavior could be or will be investigated for PPP loan fraud. I'm here to tell you. PPP loan fraud could result in numerous federal criminal charges, including, including wire fraud, bank fraud, mail fraud, identity theft, depending on the circumstances or, or, or of your case. You know, you're, you're dealing with feds on this one. The federal government has already been aggressively prosecuting individuals who have engaged in illegal conduct on their PPP loan application. And a lot of times the feds will let a person, you know, uh, get the money, enjoy the money, spend the money, spend it to splurge. The person don't got to look comfortable, may have even filled out another application to get more money. And all the feds doing is gathering evidence. They can, they can be two, three years down the road before they bust your dough down. In July of 2020, the federal prosecutors in Miami, Florida charged an individual who allegedly used PPP loan proceeds to purchase a 2020 Lamborghini. Because like I said, the feds, they're, they're, they're watching. They're watching. In August of 2020, 
the federal government charged two individuals who allegedly lied about owning a farm and employing individuals at at the home, their home in Miami, to attain a PPP loan. In October of 2020, prosecutors charged numerous individuals with bank fraud, wire fraud, after they allegedly recruited dozens of companies to submit fraudulent PPP loan applications in exchange for illegal kickbacks. So this, this deception runs deep, and I'm here to tell you. You may have somebody right now who's listening to this who personally also know people who have done this. And I'm here to tell you what goes up coming down, and I'm here to tell you. Federal law enforcement agencies have likely just scratched the surface of criminal conduct relating to the filing of PPP loan applications and other criminal investigations are very possible in the near future. Even if the person has spent the money and the money gone and, and, and they thinking they got in the way with it, one thing about the feds, you know, they, they can they can they can come after you uh, two or three or a few years down the road. Penalties for PPP loan fraud include each of the criminal charges of, uh, that I'm going to talk about carry serious potential consequences. For example, there are many consequences associated with PPP loan fraud. Number one, bank fraud. Bank fraud is punishable, punishable by up to 30 years in a federal penitentiary and a $1 million fine. Wire fraud is punishable by up to 30 years in a federal prison and a $1 million fine. Mail fraud, punishable by up to 30 years in a federal penitentiary and a $1 million fine. Identity theft, punishable by up to 30 years in federal prison and a $1 million fine. The crime in relation to identity theft, the crime can also be punishable by a minimum mandatory sentence of two years, which will run consecutively to any other convictions. In short, ladies and gentlemen, it's not worth losing your freedom, your family, and causing total destruction in your life because it will have an impact on everyone around you. And I'm here to tell you, this is not the way to go. This is not the direction to go. Use your time, use your effort in, in doing something legal to make the money the right way. And, and you hear in more and more and more and more cases about PPP loan fraud. And I'm here to tell you, these folks out here who's doing this, they thinking they're getting away with it. And, and, and I always heard throughout my life, there's one person you don't want to mess with, and that is the federal government. Because they're coming at you, either, either they're going to either do it now or they're going to do it later. But if a person's done this, fears are coming, I'm here to tell you. So, you know, uh, it, it's, it's just not worth it. There's so many ways a person can uh, create their own wealth, to create their create their own financial security and wealth to get the things you want out of life the correct way. So, with that being said, that's all I have on this topic. And I also want to give the audience a heads up on, on, on a future topic. I'm going to do, and the title of that future topic is going to be The Cell Phone Zombie Invasion. The Cell Phone Zombie Invasion. And what I mean by the cell phone zombie, zombie invasion, you know, people are just walking around, you know, so glued into their cell phone, rather they're driving, Rather, they're walking, they're bumping into things, they're falling in the holes, they're walking in the traffic, killing themselves. It's almost like being a walking zombie. So that's going to be the focus of my next topic. 
the cell phone walking zombie invasion. So please that's, hit that subscribe button. That's all I have on this topic. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification button. Support. Subscribe to my channel. Send me your comments. So with that being said, simplify, simple fidelis, and I'm going to leave you in the care of your own conscience. Have a great evening.